Quickly, before this video starts, please make sure if you're watching my channel, you are subscribed. Hit the subscribe and hit the bell. If you hit the bell, you'll know when the video goes live. If you're subscribed, that helps the channel massively. I'm getting great views for the amount of subscribers. Please subscribe. Subscribe and hit the bell. Back to the video. hello welcome to another video so today good fats versus bad fats or healthy fats versus unhealthy fats so i'm going to go through what they are where you can get each from do i use them benefits etc 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 so let's go healthy first so i'm going to call these in this video good or bad fats healthy or unhealthy is the proper term but the way I've written it out is going to be good or bad fats so I'm not saying that unhealthy fats are actually bad I don't like the term bad but for this for the purpose of this good or bad so money money unsaturated fats polyunsaturated fats so fats that are good for your heart to lower the risk of heart disease cholesterol all of them are lots and lots and lots of, of, of good things. Adding fats into your meal, pretty much in correlation with protein, a high protein diet will therefore mean that you're fuller. Fats will also make you fuller, make you feel more um, you know, fuller for longer. I don't tend to have many fats in my diet. I don't it tends to be it tends to be a lowish fat diet. Um, I just don't have fats in my diet. I just um, just don't have them. I just don't. I don't feel like I get them. I might get them with the um, shake in the morning, but I, I don't really mind. So, where can you get monounsaturated? Where can you get polyunsaturated fats? So, good sources of these are olive oil canola peanut sesame they're good fats avocados olives nuts peanut butter they're really good ways of getting it in everyone likes peanut butter everyone likes avocados apart from me not a fan polyunsaturated so more nuts like walnuts flax seeds sunflower pumpkin sesame seeds soya milk i didn't know that one soy milk soy milk Fatty fish, well we all know that, we all know that, the tuna, the salmon, the mackerel, fish oils, you're always told to um, take fish oils in the morning, um, cod liver oil and everything, tofu, there's loads of other ones. Uh, if you're wanting to add good fats into your diets, there are so many ways to do it, not just the ones that I've highlighted for this video, there are lots of ways to do it. Unhealthy or bad fats so like trans fats so you can get them in meat so trans fats are i find this good fats tend to be when you've done nothing to them so like an avocado good fats olive oil good fats nuts good fats trans fats or like saturated fats tend to be when when stuff's been done to it so like Commercially baked pastries, cookies, donuts, muffins, pizza dough, they've had, have had stuff done to them. It's not just the base level of fat, stuff's been done to them. Like chips, popcorn, margarine, vegetable fat, like fried foods, chicken, chicken nuggets, like everything that's had something done to it as opposed to it's like raw base level saturated fats so you get saturated fat in red meat beef lamb pork chicken skin saturated fat milk cream cheese butter ice cream lard coconut oil palm oil they're all saturated fats but not necessarily bad fats just saturated fats i'm not saying that having bad fats or i hate the word bad fats 
nothing's bad in moderation. Let's get that out there, right? If you're, if you're in a donut, have a donut. As long as you're everything in moderation, depending on what your goal is, calorie surplus, calorie maintenance, calorie deficit. If you're wanting to be in a deficit to lose some weight and you want a donut and the donut keeps you within your calorie deficit, then there's no issue. One bad meal won't make you fat, one skinny meal won't make you skinny or healthy. So the healthy versus good fats. So I don't feel that good or bad is the right term, healthy or unhealthy, but your body sometimes needs unhealthy fats. Plus like if you're, let's say, if you're eating 10,000 calories a day, or you're trying to maintain eight, nine, 10, sometimes even more thousand calories a day, you're not gonna get that from just good. You're gonna need to put in some bad stuff. You're gonna need to put in some pizza. You're gonna need to put in some donuts because at that point when you're at that amount of calories, it's basically calories, all you want is calories. Like my diet, I wouldn't say it's the, wouldn't say it's the worst, but I don't get many fats. I say that, I don't think I do. No. So there's this big stigma about saturated fats and about how um, they're bad for you and about how don't eat them. But everything in moderation is the key. You need to get them. And with the fats, you're going to get other things. You're going to get like omega-3s and you're going to get all those kind of things that you wouldn't normally get. So, moderation. So, money unsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. Pros. So, lower the risk of heart disease and stroke. Now, I've got this off of a, um, I've got this off of Google, so we'll take this with a pinch of salt. What I'm reading out is what I've already heard. So they can lower your cholesterol levels, prevent abnormal heart rhythms, I don't know how, lower blood pressure. Because this is, if you're having good fats, therefore you're having a good diet, if you're putting good fats in. So basically, good fats will go in, in line with a good diet. And if you're having a good diet, then yes, you will get these. One of the things about adding fats to your diet that's good is it will reduce hunger, it will. And I find, since I've been having a um, mass gainer shake, vegan mass gainer shake for breakfast, click here to watch that video, um, or here, somewhere up there. Um, I feel like I'm losing, not losing weight, but I feel like I, I don't graze. I'll have a breakfast in about half an hour and because I'm eating a big breakfast, it's easy to eat, and then I either feel satisfied all the way through till dinner. I'm not grazing, I'm not eating on stuff I shouldn't be eating. So that's the same with the fats. If you're having fats with your meal, fats and proteins, are gonna keep you fuller for longer. And if you're fuller for longer, you're then not gonna graze, which will also promote weight loss. Because if you're eating the right stuff, but you're eating it in good quantities and you're eating the right things that are going to keep you full, you're not going to snack, you're not going to be hungry before your next meal's ready. So that's a good thing about using fats. You can, it'll keep you fuller for longer. Well, if you're like me, it won't, because I'm, I'm never full. But at the moment, having the shake in the morning with the sugar waffles and a coffee, that's nine o'clock-ish. I'm then fine through till dinner, half 12, 12 o'clock. But I, I don't know why, but having a shake in the morning makes me hungrier, makes me able to eat more throughout the day. So I just thought I'd touch on today, good fats versus bad fats. Because I've been seeing a lot of articles online that are saying, oh, bad fats and label them as the devil and you don't want to eat them. But that's not the case. Everything in moderation. You could eat cake for every meal, but if you were still in a deficit, you'd still lose weight. It's not the healthiest, I wouldn't recommend it. As opposed to, you could eat chicken, rice and broccoli, eight meals a day, yeah, and you still get over your calories.